Eight decades after World War II, the Atlantic Wall is still breaking up. Vestiges of the German occupation of Northern Europe, 8,000 bunkers line the seafront from Norway to the south of France, abandoned to the elements. But it is still possible to make use of this heritage in concrete. At St. Mathieu's Point on the tip of the Finisterre, a young Breton came up with the idea of opening a museum in a half-buried bunker, once a strategic point for the German system of defenses. This is the command post of the biggest artillery battery in Finisterre. Its guns had a range of 30 kilometers all around. We're at the mouth of Brest Harbor, so this post was intended to prevent British or American ships from forcing an entry into the port of Brest. As a child, Aurélien found his grandfather's old uniform in the attic of the family home. This find gave rise to a real passion. And for years, the young man crisscrossed the Brittany countryside in search of the objects and accounts which now fill his museum steeped in history. Dans notre baraquement, tous les copains m'appellent le vieux parce que je suis le seul à être marié et avoir des enfants. Ce matin, le silence est revenu. En passant par un chemin au bord de l'eau, j'aperçois le corps d'un marin allemand étendu sur la grève. Je m'approche et suis troublé par ce spectacle. L'une de ses jambes a été presque arrachée par une explosion. Moving accounts collected by Aurélien himself from survivors marked by the events of war. There are magical moments when you meet these people, when they tell you a story about something they actually experienced. It might have only lasted a few seconds, but they've carried it inside them since. All the emotions of the time are etched into them, so they're able to describe the exact context, the environment, all the little details. In Lorient Harbour, another bunker, an imposing concrete cathedral that testifies to a bitter past. Built by the Nazis to shelter and repair their U-boats, Keromain Samarine Base was one of Europe's largest military fortresses during World War II. It required one million cubic meters of concrete, an invulnerable base relentlessly bombed by the Allies, but never destroyed unlike the city of Lorient, which was left in ruins. After the war, the base was used by the French Navy until 1997. But today it has another purpose, as home to one of the world leaders in the manufacturing of carbon masts for yachts. It's surprising and a little bit spooky to think that we work in a place that once had a very different purpose. And despite the cold outside, we're able to produce some amazing things in here. In this 5,000 square meter space, the air temperature and humidity are constant. This bunker is the ideal place for making high performance carbon masts. The firm makes the majority of the masts used on boats taking part in the Vendée Globe and Route de Rame races. The tallest mast we've built is 54 meters long and weighs five tons. We have enough length space-wise to be able to handle masts that long and to make them and assemble them together bit by bit. Still in Brittany, at the start of the Crozon Peninsula, is a surprising network of tunnels. They weren't part of the Atlantic Wall, but were built by the Allies after the war and were used as an armament store for decades. But a few years ago, a young entrepreneur had the idea of starting a business in this concrete maze and brewing beer. Setting up a brewery underground isn't very common, but I said, OK, let's do this. So I started up the Bout du Monde, the world's end brewery. And it's aptly named as we're on the Crozon Peninsula, which is at the world's end. Plus, you can't see any further than the end of the brewery. So again, we really are at the world's end. Brewing beer here in what the locals call the NATO tunnels was a rather odd choice. But the site has now become part of the startup's trademark. And yet, laying out and fitting the place required a lot of ingenuity. 
You can find an answer to every problem, but you have to think differently than a normal building. This place is like a lighthouse, an underground lighthouse lying down, because it's a long tunnel that reaches a large room. A lighthouse is the same, only it's vertical. It goes upwards until it reaches a large room with a light in it. It's a bit like that here. If you forget something, you have to go all the way back down again. So I'm telling you, we walk miles and miles every day. That's really good. Really. It's quite sweet. Yeah, and it's got, it's got almost like a touch of IPA to it. Making a product for pleasure in a facility once dedicated to warfare is a way of thumbing your nose at history, of making peace with a concrete heritage that we long tried to forget.